Oh, yes, sir, I'll be sure to include that in this program. The, uh, the film covering the whole operation just arrived today, and we're ready to show it to the public for the first time. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. That was the United States Army Research and Development Command. We were just discussing one of their newest anti-aircraft defensive systems, a real breakthrough in the technology of mobile missile systems. We'll have a look at this new protective weapon system in just a moment. We'll also take an exciting inside look at the United States European Command in action. All this in the next 30 minutes as your Army reports. Attack from the air has long been a major problem to forward battle area commanders because of the high speed and great destructive power of the modern jet warplane. But a solution has been found to the problem by research and development specialists in the highly effective mobile Chaparral Vulcan air defense system which detects, tracks, and destroys low-flying enemy aircraft. Vulcan air defense system meets this army need of forward battle area protection against low-flying enemy aircraft. This highly mobile and versatile tactical system features a supersonic infrared homing missile and a rapid-fire high-performance Vulcan gun system mounted on the existing M113 family of vehicles. The vehicles are powered by diesel engines with automatic transmissions that will move the Chaparral and Vulcan along at up to 40 miles an hour with a cruising range of 300 miles. Aside from being air transportable, they are capable of swimming inland bodies of water. The fire control is based on a newly improved lead computing site using data from a range-only radar. The Chaparral and Vulcan gunners are alerted by the advance warning from the forward area alerting radar, FAR, which is integrated with the two fire units. It is capable of detecting moving targets at very low altitudes. Part of the gun itself was adapted from an existing aircraft mounted weapon. It is an electrically driven 20 millimeter cannon with six rotating barrels on the Gatling gun principle. To meet the special needs of airborne and air mobile units, there is still another version of Vulcan designed to be towed by any number of vehicles. The Chaparral missile, adopted from the Navy's Sidewinder 1C, is just under 10 feet long and weighs slightly less than 200 pounds. Four missiles are carried on the launch rails while traveling. Eight additional missiles are stored in the vehicle. The Chaparral normally carries a five-man crew in the passenger compartment. After the Chaparral is driven into a tactical area, the blast shield is then positioned to protect the vehicle from effects of the missile firing. Each observer is equipped with a field telephone and deploys to an area providing a good, unobstructed view of potential targets.
selection chief and the driver work as a team to coordinate pre-firing activities and monitor radio messages. The battle sequence is initiated when an observer locates a target and relays, using the clock system, appropriate information to the gunner. Typically, this information includes both azimuth and elevation coordinates. When the gunner sights the target, he proceeds to establish IR acquisition by slewing the mount. Using the sight reticle pattern superimposed on the target image, an audio tone is received to indicate target contact. The gunner begins the launch sequence by pressing the trigger on the control handle, thus generating the firing signal. As soon as the sequencing is complete, the final signal is received from the fire unit, initiating rocket motor ignition. Within a few milliseconds, the missile clears the launcher and flies under the control of its internal guidance system to intercept the target. Chaparral Vulcan, a powerful twosome, effectively combined to provide the Army with a forward area defense system that is mobile, reliable, and lethal. The Chaparral mobile missile system and the Vulcan rapid fire guns are now being phased into the Army weapon system for air defense use in the forward battle area. Our next story is about the United States European Command and the tremendous job it is doing in supporting America's commitment to the Atlantic Treaty Organization. The responsibility of this command extends throughout all of free Europe. Here is how USUCOM handles the job. Prosperous and industrious, with ghosts of the war years dispelled, struggles for recovery almost a forgotten experience. Post-war resurgence, a modern miracle of industry and ingenuity. Bustling and busy, Europe today. Rich in old world heritage, but attuned to the tempo of today. Castles on the Rhine look down on the commerce of a modern Europe linking the vibrant present to the picturesque past. Europe today, one generation away from a war all men and all nations would like to forget. 25 years ago, this was the picture. is over and the troops depart. Hopefully, hastily, the nations demobilize. All except the Soviet Union. And now, in humanitarian urgency, the Marshall Plan is born to rebuild a war-shattered continent. It's created without Soviet participation. Hopes for peace pinned to the newly established United Nations receive a setback as the Security Council is undermined by the Soviet Union's abuse of the veto, and the Red Army takes over the Baltic countries, virtually all of Eastern Europe. Nation after nation vanishes behind the Iron Curtain, as minority communist parties, with strong Soviet support, seize power and control in Hungary, Romania, Poland, and Czechoslovakia. Giving active aid to communist rebels in the Greek Civil War, the Soviet Union has also placed pressure on Turkey for territorial concessions. Pressure resisted and overcome with United States assistance. And in June 1948, seeking to force Western powers to abandon Berlin, the Soviets blockade the city. Transportation comes to a standstill. breaks the blockade.
the Soviet Union still threatens a disarmed Europe with more than 200 ready divisions. Aware of the danger, the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands come together in the Treaty of Brussels. Then on April 4th, 1949, the United States joins with Brussels Treaty Nations and with Canada, Norway, Portugal, Italy, Iceland, Denmark, and later West Germany, Greece, and Turkey to become allied defense partners in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. With the formation of NATO, United States forces returned to Europe because the security of the free Western world and the United States was plainly indivisible. Increased financial support came with the United States partnership too. Over $100 billion to help Western nations reconstruct shattered economies and defenses as allied nations joined forces to build a shield against aggression, forging a sword of retaliation. In concert with allied NATO nations, securing free world borders that extend across continental Europe and along the Mediterranean, the U.S. European Command finds direction at Stuttgart, Germany. The United States European Command. Brussels, Belgium. Near Brussels, Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, SHAPE, has been newly established. UCOM's Commander-in-Chief serves also as NATO's Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. Picturesque Heidelberg. West Germany's famed storybook town is now headquarters for U.S. Army Europe and UCOM's main striking force, the U.S. 7th Army, the backbone of U.S. ground forces committed to NATO. Persuasive power for peace. All of UCOM's ready units in Europe maintain a peak of combat effectiveness, constantly sharpening their edge. At Grafenwehr, Hohenfels, Wildflecken. And UCOM is mobile with transport aircraft delivering troops and armament to any trouble spot. Deployed in depth through Central Europe, U.S. Army and Allied troops maintain constant border surveillance. Along the line of communist barbed wire, they guard a frontier, manned and mined for a thousand miles to keep an imprisoned people in. The western section of Berlin. 
industrious and prosperous. But there's the wall, separating a city and a world. beyond the wall, past Checkpoint Charlie. There's the greatest concentration of communist troops and armament outside the Soviet Union. The American, British, and French garrisons in Berlin represent Allied determination to maintain Berlin's freedom. Vicenza, Italy. Headquartered at Vicenza, U.S. Army elements are committed to the Southern European Task Force. From bases in Italy, Army aircraft provide troop lift capability, providing support for this Italian-American missile command. lines extending across Europe support UCOM's frontline combat forces. London. Here in London, there's another vital UCOM link. Headquarters United States Navy Forces Europe directing defense plans and operations in the Mediterranean, Baltic, and Black Seas, with powerful forces earmarked for NATO in event of war. from Mediterranean ports, the U.S. 6th Fleet, with its nuclear carrier strike force, provides a deterrent power for peace in these waters. Constantly embarked, Marine Corps forces stand ready whenever and wherever circumstances might require. Wiesbaden, Germany.
in Wiesbaden, Headquarters United States Air Forces, Europe. Ever watchful along Soviet and satellite frontiers that sweep in a great arc across nearly a quarter of the Earth's surface. Combat squadrons of tactical and defense fighters are deployed in bases throughout Europe. Reconnaissance planes streak across European skies observing and reporting any possible enemy threat. Backing this poised power, the U.S. military assistance program has helped allies maintain effectively balanced defense teams. With men, money, specialists, and equipment, we've helped the free people of Western Europe build their own military deterrent forces. With over half of America's budget devoted to the cost of defense and foreign aid, the United States today lends support to national progress and security in many free nations around the globe. And when disaster strikes, American forces are ready to assist in relief and rescue. Floods in Morocco. An earthquake in Iran. American rescue teams respond. U.S. servicemen and their families are members of the European community, making lasting friendships. in holiday celebrations and participate in community projects, enjoying every minute of it. But vigilance is the story. This plane is ours. It could be theirs. This watchful aircraft warning complex focuses on communist East Germany, on Czechoslovakia, keeping an eye on the sky, on air action over there that could erupt at any given moment into aggressive attack over here. The threat is always there, but the deterrent is here. Poised and ready. The fate of free Europe could be decided in a few seconds. Supersonic aircraft could be across Europe in a matter of minutes. But for the fact that aggressor nations know that our reaction would be instantaneous and explosive. With full awareness of our strike back capability, any aggressor is less likely to invite retaliation. Still, world peace could be shattered at any moment, today or tomorrow, hopefully never. But should military aggression be launched against Western Europe, the poised power of a free Europe would respond. Part of that power, the U.S. defense team would enact in reality their carefully drilled roles.
confident belief in the future of a growing and dynamic Europe, UCOM stands ready with NATO allies to maintain the freedom of Western Europe against aggression. This is a story of constant vigil, of determination, of maximum readiness, readiness at sea, on the ground, and in the air. This is U.S. Yukon, the United States European Command. That is our report for the present. We have had a preview of the Army's latest mobile missile defense system designed to protect forward battle area installations and how the U.S. European Command carries out its missions on a sweeping scale. For more interesting stories about the United States Army on duty around the world, be sure to watch for the next issue of Your Army Report.